Now that we are in Adobe Illustrator, I have taught this lots of different ways over the years. One way is to just have you guys play with Illustrator and show you all the different things it can do, but that tends to overwhelm students that are new to it. So I'm going to teach it first, because we're going to get more practice on future projects, but just towards what you need for this assignment, right? So we're going to only be making black shapes, cutting shapes out of black shapes, defining our own shapes. We could build them up with the given shape tools like we did for exercise two. There's lots of ways. But the first thing we need to do is have our blueprint. We've worked a lot with past assignments where we do a sketch and then we work over the top of the sketch to meet our intentions, whether it was our creature composite or fantasy landscape. So now we do that with our refined logo sketch. So we're going to do something called onion skinning. Onion skinning is named after the, the tracing vellum that's used by designers. And it's made of plastic. It's about 50% opaque. So all I need you to do is to double click on the layer. I got to get out of this mode. To make sure it's selected. And this is the image. Oh, I'm in isolation mode. I hate that. Okay, now I'm in the regular place. There we go. So you double click on the layer, not the image, but the layer. Notice how the layers have drop down menus or a drop down arrow. I could rename it if I want. I might call this my sketch layer. But layers in Illustrator are purely organizational. So if I double click on the layer, it's going to give me some options for that layer. Don't worry about the color. That it's only applies when it's a vector. But it says dim images too. This is where we can onion skin something. You basically play with the opacity. Because you'll notice there's no opacity slider for the layers like there is in, in Illustrator or in a Photoshop. So I say dim images too. And then the default is 50% because that's how we usually use this. And you say OK. And then that dims it down. If you want to dim it more, you can always do that again, and you can do, do it to a higher percentage. Like, or a lower percentage. So I want it to only show up, you know, 20%. So I can really see my black shapes on top of it. Okay, next, remember that this is an image that might have white pixels in it. And we don't want those at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, when we finish our vector, we want to be able to drag our vector off of the artboard. And it will look like it's on a gray background instead of a white background. Because we're just doing cut out black shapes. Now once we've done that, we can lock this layer. And that's so important in Illustrator to be able to lock layers, organizational layers, that it's its own space right next to the eyeball. So click on that space and it becomes the padlock. So each layer is actually an organizational group of different paths. And I don't want you to make any paths on your sketch layer. I want you to create a new layer for your paths. So once you've made your sketch, you've onion skinned it by dimming its opacity to whatever percentage you want. Then we make a new layer just like we do in Photoshop using the little post-it icon at the bottom of the layer window. If you don't see the layer window, go to Window, Find Layers. The ones we need are layers and pathfinder. All right, next, we're going to start with some building tools. How do you make a vector? Remember, a vector is a path that goes from one point to the next point. The most basic tool in Illustrator is the pen tool. This is how Illustrator started. It's weird that it's a pen. Because like a pen, it's once you put it down, it kind of has a mind of its own, right? But unlike a pen, you can edit it <laughs> very fully after the fact. So let's start with this shape. This shape is mostly hard edges, or straight edges, rather. And then it has one curve at the end. So straight edges are very easy with the pen, and some designers in Illustrator like to make everything with straights first. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I click, I click, I move, I click, I move, I click, 
It's going to be filling it in with white just because that's what's in the foreground. But that can always be changed, so don't worry about that. I can change these straights into curves later if I want to. But right now I'm doing it all with straights. Okay, now notice I had to close my path. So because it's not pixel based, you'll see that that vector is perfectly clean, even though my sketch is very, very rasterized, right? And you can barely tell because these points, which are your anchor points, are not going to enlarge as I zoom in because they're just points in space. They don't take up any real space. But you'll see that the little dot here is empty. The little dot here is empty. The little dot here is empty. The only one that's solid is the one where I closed the loop. So this is what's called a closed path. Let me show you what an open path looks like. But before I do that, let me change the color of the fill of the path. So every time you make a path, especially a closed path, it will carry with it two properties. One is the fill color, which in this case is white, but if I double click on that, I can make it black or red or anything I want. The other is the stroke color. The stroke is now turned off, like you'll remember from exercise two. But if I double click on that, I can make the stroke a color. I'll make it red just so it shows up. The stroke is independent and different than the path. <laughs> so notice, in this case, it's overlapping the path because the stroke has its own size. And unlike in um, Photoshop for layer styles, when you make a stroke, you can put it on the outside of the shape, on the inside of the shape, or at the center of the shape. In Illustrator, a stroke always centers on whatever your path is. We are not going to use strokes <laughs> because they are not as easy to control. So your stroke is always just going to be turned off. And we'll check that at the end. Okay, now, let me show you what an open path looks like. What if I draw something, like I'll draw, you can do Command Z to go backwards. I'll draw a regular crown. And now we'll use the default that I had before, which is the black. Now the black is filled and there is no stroke around it. Okay, but this time I'm going to leave that path un unclosed. And I'm going to change tools. So now if we look at it, you see that there is no vector line between these two. But because I have it filled, the computer is going to make that close happen for me. Just like it was locked. Does that make sense? Also, notice that there are two arrow tools at the top. These are kind of like move tools. The one on top is called the selection tool, right? And if you click on a closed path or an open path, because remember this is an open path, it will select the whole thing, let you move it, put a transform box around it. If you're very precise with where you click, <laughs> you can rotate it. You can grab it and distort it. You can even flip it over just like you can with free transform of shapes in Photoshop. Okay, but if you use the other tool, this is the one I'll mostly be using. This is called the direct selection tool. This is for selecting the individual anchor points. It will actually label them for you. Anchor, anchor. Then it gives you these little dots. This is fairly new in Illustrator within the last decade. And these are rounding tools. And this is different than plotting a curve. What this would do is if I wanted to round out these points, I just drag on that circle. And it will round out the points. And if I hold down, let me see if I remember command. Nope. If I hold down shift, there's a way to isolate it. Oh no, what I need to do is 
click off of it with the white arrow, the direct selection tool, and then click on the point so I only see the dot there instead of seeing them everywhere, right? And now I'm only adjusting this point. I can actually move that point around and I can also just round that point. But what does it do when it rounds? It's actually splitting it into two points, two anchor points. And each of those anchor points, now if I click on those, they have what's called a Bezier handle. And this is for a Bezier curve. And that curve can be made to do any kind of curve between those two points. And the curve has two sides. So I can curve it out on one side and flatten it on the other side. So this is not incredibly intuitive, but it allows you to make any two-dimensional shape you want with as few anchor points as necessary. And that's going to give you the cleanest edges. So I can also select the whole thing using the, the big selection tool, right? See all my anchors, and I can actually turn off the fill as well. And this is what's called an empty path. And when I click off of it, it's not even there unless I'm hovering over it with a selection tool. But at any time, that can give, be given a stroke. It be, can be given a fill. But I recommend we always close our paths. So how can I do that? Well, I can select it and then use the small selection tool, grab this anchor. And when it's a closed path, it's really hard to see. And then find where I can connect it. And now it's a closed path. We want all our paths to be closed and we want them all to be filled with black. And an easy way to get to there is to use the defaults, which are in the upper left hand corner. The default in Illustrator is a white fill and a black stroke. You're going to reverse those. So it's a black fill with a white stroke. And then you're going to click on the white stroke and turn it off. That's how you get to black shapes from the defaults. Okay, now how do we turn a straight into a curve? Because I want this to be curved. Well, I could try the direct selection tool and click on these anchors and then round it out, but that's going to round it out on both sides and I don't want that. And that doesn't give me a curve here. So this is where we get to the different pen tools. And you'll see them underneath the pen. And it's called the anchor point tool. And it looks like an empty arrow. The anchor point tool allows you to convert straights to curves just by clicking on them and dragging. There we go. Now I remember Bezier handles always have two sides. So I want it curved on that side, but I don't want it curved on this side. So what do I need to do? I need to use that direct selection tool grab this handle, which I get by finding that anchor point, right? And then I get the handles, and then I can just drag that handle back all the way back to its source until it locks. Now it's straight on one side, curved on the other side. And that's complicated enough, right? I can get my curve that way, but also I could do it with the other one. So how do I convert that straight into curves? I use, it's underneath the pen tool, the anchor point tool, or I think of it as the convert anchor point tool. I click on that anchor and pull, and that will turn it into curves. And then I can use the direct selection tool, grab the handle, pull it back to its source without flipping it. Then I can use that to adjust this handle. So I can actually use two curves to make that arc exactly what I want. And then if I wanted to look through this image, I select all of it, there is an option for, in your layers, for transparency. This is like opacity. And so when you open transparency up, you will get an opacity slider. 
and I can take that down enough so I can see my sketch.